In this video, we're going to take a look at solving quadratic equations. Now, the quadratics that we're looking at here clearly don't have real solutions. They will have either imaginary or complex solutions. Okay, so clearly we know how to solve quadratics that have real solutions, but now we're interested in solving quadratics with imaginary or complex solutions. Now, before we actually take a look at these two examples here and solve these equations, let's just discuss what happens with the solutions which are complex. So if I have a general quadratic equation that has complex solutions, so if I've got az squared plus bz plus c, so plus c, and this is equal to zero. So if one of my solutions here, let's say z1, let's just say this is one plus three i, okay? These numbers don't really mean anything. I'm just picking them as, a, as an example. So my second solution here is z2, this will be the conjugate of z1, okay? So the solutions to a quadratic that is that are complex solutions, they occur in a conjugate pair, okay? And we are familiar with the conjugate of a complex number. We have covered that already. If you aren't familiar with that, go and check out the previous video on the complex conjugate. So in this case, z2, the second solution, is the conjugate of z1. So we can note that down here. And in this case, that would be 1 minus 3i, okay? So just be aware of that idea. They do occur in conjugate pairs. So let's take a look now at solving these two examples here, which will hopefully illustrate this idea here of these solutions occurring in a conjugate pair. So for this one here, we're asked to solve the equation z squared plus 16 is equal to zero. So the first thing I can do here is subtract 16 off both sides. So what I get then is just z squared on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side here, we're going to get minus 16. So what I want to do now is solve for z. So what I need to do is square root both sides. So on the left-hand side, we just get z. And on the right-hand side here, we're going to get plus or minus. So remember, take care here. We need the plus and minus of the square root of minus 16. Now, the square root of minus 16, we do know how to deal with that. So we can split that up. The square root of minus 16. We can write that as the square root of minus 1 times the square root of 16. Square root of minus 1 is i, the square root of 16 is 4, so we get 4i there, okay? So my solution here for z is going to be plus or minus 4i. And notice this occurs now in that, that conjugate. So what I've got is one solution, so one solution, say z1, is 4i, and my other solution, z2, is minus 4i, okay? Like you can see, we have that conjugate. So that was quite a straightforward example. Let's take a look now at this one. So we're asked to solve the equation z squared plus 6z plus 18 is equal to 0. And again here, what we want to do is just solve this equation. Now, clearly we can't factorize this. So there's two ways we do this. We either complete the square or we use the quadratic formula. And it's completely up to you which method you apply to solve quadratics like this. I'm going to complete the square, but this is honestly just a personal choice. It's completely up to you. So remember to complete the square, we just have the coefficient of z here. So we're going to write that as z plus 3. We square this. We now subtract this value squared. So that would be minus 9. And then we include whatever's left over. So plus 18. And this is all equal to 0. OK, so that's a 0. So simplifying the left-hand side here, we get z plus 3 all squared. Minus 9 plus 18, it's the same as 18 minus 9, so I get plus 9 there. And this is equal to 0. So we're looking again to solve for z here. So the first thing I can do is subtract 9 off both sides. So we get z plus 3 all squared is equal to minus 9. We now just want, again, we just want the z here, so I need to get rid of the square. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I get z plus 3 on the left-hand side here. And on the right hand side now we get plus or minus, so plus or minus the square root of minus 9. So just again splitting this up as a product, I have two thirds here. I'm going to get z plus 3 on the left hand side, I won't change yet. And on the right hand side here we're going to get plus or minus 3i. And then finally, like we said, we just want z on its own. So all I need to do is subtract 3 off both sides. So therefore, z is equal to minus 3 plus or minus 3i, okay? And again, we can see this conjugate pair now. 
what I've got here is two solutions. I've got Z1, which is minus 3 plus 3i. And we also have Z2, which is minus 3 minus 3i. Okay, so notice that Z2 is the conjugate of Z1. Okay, so that was two examples that we've worked through together. Now it's your turn to have a go at a couple of practice questions. So like always, pause the video now, have a quick go, and then we'll take a look in a moment at what you should have got. So hopefully you've gotten okay with these two practice questions. Let's take a look now at what you should have got. So for the first one here, we're just looking to solve this equation. So again, the first thing I'm going to do here is just subtract 169 off both sides. So therefore, we get z squared is equal to minus 169. Now we're going to square root both sides. We just want to solve for z here. So we square root both sides. I get z on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side here, we're taking the square root of minus 169. And don't forget, we need the plus or minus here. So the square root of minus 169, well, we could split that off as, so let's just write this here. So that would be the square root of minus 1 times the square root of 169. So the square root of 169 is 13. The square root of minus 1 is i. So we get 13 i there. So z is equal to plus or minus 13 i there. Okay. So hopefully it wasn't too bad. If we take a look at the final problem then, we're asked to solve the equation z squared plus 2z plus 5 is equal to 0. So here again, we're just going to take a look now either by completing the square or by using the quadratic formula that we can't factorize. Okay, so again, I'm going to use the, um, I'm going to use completing the square, but if you do want to use the quadratic formula, that's absolutely fine. So by completing the square here, we're going to get z plus 1. Remember, we just have the coefficient of z here. We square this. We now subtract this value squared, so that's going to be minus 1, and add on whatever's left. So plus 5 there, and this is all equal to 0. So we're going to simplify the left-hand side first, so I get z plus 1, all squared. Minus 1 plus 5, so that would give me um, 4 there, so we get plus 4, and this is equal to 0. So the first thing I'm going to do here is subtract 4 off both sides, so we get z plus 1, all squared is equal to minus 4. We now want to get rid of the square here, so we take the square root of both sides. So I get z plus 1 is equal to the positive and negative of the square root of minus 4. Now the square root of minus 4 is equal to 2i. So what I get here is z plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 2i. And then finally, just to get z on its own here, we subtract 1 off both sides. So z is equal to minus 1 plus or minus 2i there. Okay. And notice again here, clearly, this occurs in a conjugate pair. So I've got z1. That would be minus 1 plus 2i. And z2 here, notice this is the conjugate of z1. That would be minus 1 minus 2i. Okay, and there we have it. So that's our solution to the final um, problem here. So that brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to take a look at solving cubics and quartic equations.